Tate McRae. Everyone clap. Woo. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> so good to have you back. Thank so you. Good to see you. I was saying it's probably like our 10th interview together. We've done so many. I love it. <laughs> so many memories. <laughs> so many memes. I love it. Um, I was talking about how I'm entering a marriage era. You're entering your pop girl era. <laughs> I'm entering my pop girl era. How does that feel? Two how different feel? eras. <laughs> Very different eras. Yeah. Feels good. I'm so ready to drop this song. It's been forever. <laughs> yeah. I know. Tell me about Greedy. I'm so excited for it. I've, every, I, along with everyone else, just have that little snippet. The 12 seconds of it. That I've just listened to over and over <laughs> in preparation for this. But yeah. Um, I'm so excited. Feels totally different than anything I've ever done. Um, the music video is my favorite music video I've done yet. Um, so I'm just very pumped for people to see like the full thing and it all come together. Finally. Yeah, the Zamboni. The Zamboni. Is that just a, like a call to your Canadian roots? It, yes. I was like, I have to learn how to drive a Zamboni. I have to. I just think this would be an iconic shot. And it was so fun. So that's you actually driving it? Yeah, it's not a, like a green oh, nice. screen or anything. Right. I actually took lessons and everything. <laughs> was it difficult? Um, no, it was like moved like three miles per hour. <laughs> like, right. So slow. But it looked like fake. It was like, yeah, it looked yeah. like a green screen. So if the music career doesn't work out. Then, I, yeah, I'm your next Sam Boney driver. Yeah, catch Tay at the local arena. Is Seriously. that what they're called? Sk- skating rink. Arena. Yeah. Is it arena? Rink. Yeah. yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Um, Ryan Tedder. Uh-huh. How did that all come to be working with him? Um, I worked with him. We've been like planning on writing for a second. I wrote with him once in the pandemic over Zoom and Zoom just like sucked. Yeah. Like all those sessions were brutal. Um, and then we finally worked this year in January for like a week. And it was at the end of this week where we like, okay, we've done these songs, like certain style. And we're like, let's just do something random. Let's do something fun on the last day. Like kind of just like push ourselves and do something totally different. And then that's when we wrote Greedy. It was like the last day. Um, so it was really fun. He's so talented and amazing. Nice. Yeah. So is that kind of the sound that we can expect like in the next project? Or you said it's totally different? I think it's all over. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's not like too many with that sound. But it's definitely like one entity. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. How, d- how does it feel like going from your first album to then having those experiences? Like what do you take from that that you can then bring into your next work? Um... I mean, I think with your first album, it's like, you're like, okay, how do I introduce myself? Like, you kind of just want to, like, nail down every part of your personality and, like, you want to, like, you know, figure out what you want to say for the first time. And then for your sophomore album, it's like, okay, how do I, like, move on from that? Um, And, I mean, people always say this, like, girls, I feel like constantly have to, like, um, recreate themselves over and over again. And... I think in this album, I really just, like, tuned into, like, a more feistier, like, sexier, more, like, lovey side of me, which was interesting to play with. Yeah, I feel like we're getting that with Greedy, right? (laughs) Is that hard to have to kind of feel that need to reinvent yourself? Because I do feel like you see, like, Ariana Grande or, like, any pop star comes out in, like, a whole new look or, like, Taylor Swift. Of course. And then it's, like... Ed Sheeran or whoever just comes out and does this what they did already like it doesn't feel like they have to put as much effort maybe they do but I think so too yeah for women I do feel like it is a lot harder I, yeah I think people just expect um girls to constantly just like come out with like brand new branding and brand new hair and brand new like and always you always have to be like leveling up it's a s- super weird thing that the industry does um yeah. I don't think that's ever gonna die though like people still expect it every album you'll see like a girl come out and they're like okay i wonder what she's gonna do next yeah so i don't think um that idea that we've like talked about now and it like has been brought to light is ever gonna really die people just always expect that of girls yeah do you feel that pressure then did like because i it is hard you because people expect you to be a whole new person in like a year i mean there's so many things with like women i think it's like you're there's just so many expectations that you can never really live up to like the way you look, the way you sing, the way you perform, you're too, like, aggressive on stage, you're too, like, you're not giving enough energy on stage, you're not blah, blah, and it's constantly being criticized, so it's like, you can't even look at anything, you gotta just be like, I, I like this, I think this is really cool, and hopefully my fans like it too. Yeah. Um, that's, like, I think the only meter you can judge it on. Right. Where yeah. do you see those critiques? Are those, like, comments? Yeah, I mean, I try not to read comments. TikTok is crazy. Sometimes if <laughs> if you like look up your name, it is crazy. Yeah. And it's like the best of the best and the worst of the worst. Right. Like I don't like to read into either because it's just like um a very you're like on the internet just to get judged. And now 
at like concerts, like every move is getting filmed. Do you think about that while you're on stage? Uh, not really. I kind of just like to like throw myself out there and be like, let's have a party and let's have the best time ever. And I don't really care. I don't, sometimes I watch videos and I'm like, ah, I look like a train wreck. <laughs> like literally I'm like screaming in people's faces, like jumping. I look like I'm like moshing on the stage by myself. Um, but I kind of love that. I'm like, I hope my concerts stay like that forever. Just like having the best time and not really, you know, caring about what I look like or what I'm acting like. Right. You've said before that when you were like 12 and you were on TV, you were like very critical of yourself and a perfectionist and you would tweak a lot of things. Do you do that then when you're watching yourself now? Yeah, of course. I mean, also just like you're getting, <laughs> they're like, all the videos are from like this low, right, yeah. <laughs> this like low angle of me on stage. And it's, I'm like listening to myself, like sing, but then also I'm, I'm screaming at people and then also <laughs> I'm dancing and I'm jumping and right. I'm like, there's no chance I could make a perfect picture if, you know, I'm putting this much energy into but a performance. But seeing those videos makes me want to like go to a Tate show. So I well, think it's, thank you. yeah, I, I think it's great. I appreciate that. But speaking of like being a woman in the industry and all of the things, you have kind of been in the public eye for like a, a while. Yeah. How does that feel? Especially like now you're not a teenager anymore. You're really like growing up in front of so many eyes. How does yeah. that, yeah, how's that feel? Um, yeah, it's hard. I think it's interesting because all my fans who knew me when I was 13, we're all 20 now. So mm. they all kind of grew up with me and now my shows are getting older. I'm getting older. You know, I think for the longest time, like even s like 17, 18, 19, I had no idea what I was doing. I was also just like, I didn't know I was going to be a singer. I didn't know that I was going to be in this industry. I was kind of just like free for all in it. Um, and I think like, the, uh, like, like we said, the internet is so tough on girls. I just think that it's a totally different dynamic where like every single thing gets picked apart and you don't even realize you're doing it. Um, and you don't even realize what you're saying sometimes or how you're acting. So I think that's the difficult part, but then it's also like making sure you're finding the fun in it at the same time. Yeah. Because it's like, if you're not having fun on stage and you're not have fun, having fun writing music, then there's literally no point putting yourself out here. Yeah. That's a good yeah. point. And I'm sure having like a support system or having other friends in the industry too is like, Oh my gosh. Probably helpful. I have some badass girlfriends and it's really nice to be able to see them thrive too. And, um, that's always like very supportive. Yes. Okay. Speaking of badass girlfriends, I do have a pitch for you. Okay. I have an idea. Okay, okay. So I feel like artists talk about like they want to redo Lady Marmalade, but I really think that you should take the, you know, Lady Marmalade, right? Um, it's like pink and Christina Aguilera, Maya. Okay. Who else is in it? There's like five <laughs> okay. huge like pop stars from that time. Okay. All came and did a song together. Okay. I think you need to redo it <laughs> Get with all my like friends the together. artist of your choice. <laughs> And then redo this song because I think okay. it's like next gen Lady Marmalade, right? Wow. Good pitch. Okay. So when it happens, okay. I'm going to come for the monetization. Good but idea. Do you know who you would pick then? If like, if you had to do a group, I'm putting you on the spot, but like Ooh. a song with four other friends. Um, can I just choose any girls? Yeah. It doesn't even have to be someone, you know, I would want Ice Spice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Cause I think she's a badass. Yeah. Um, I would want Olivia obviously in my group. I would want, ooh. You can have non-females too if you want, but. Um, I think Pink Panther S is really cool. Yeah. I think that would be really cool. Me. <laughs> and, ooh, who else? Yeah, it's tough, right? That is tough. I I'm know. like trying to like. Okay, fine. I'll do it. Okay. <laughs> and, and, yeah, and you do. Perfect. Yeah. And then you're our last piece. I'll just be there standing. Yeah, please. Thank you. Yeah, no, totally. Okay, that's a, you could even do it with that's four. That's a great group. That's a great group. Yeah, great. <laughs> just jump right in. Yeah. Amazing. Um, When you shot the music video with Olivia, did you have any haunted experiences? You guys were like in an insane asylum? Yeah. Um, It was a super, super strange set. It was like in this like neighborhood and we like drove around on a golf court. We like made this one guy like take us around and like show us all the the places and we're all of us are such nerds like we're all like at the end of the day like just like band kids who are just like love reading haunted stories and we were like on this golf course like reading all these like articles about this like place trying to like scare ourselves <laughs> did it work yeah for sure we were terrified say, that's terrifying yeah. that's crazy how was that experience besides being scared so fun they're all uh, all my best girlfriends and it was just a really fun day yeah we had like a blast oh that's great do you and olivia play songs for each other we do yeah um we like go on drives and we'll like go get an in-out burger 
and we'll just like play all of our favorite songs and get we'll be like you know judge this super harshly and give really? me like your honest opinion and we both do so there'll be times where she'll be like mm, that's not it yeah wow or she'll be like this is too long or this is blah, blah, blah and it's yeah it's so helpful i i i think always showing your music to other musicians is uh nerve-wracking because they just like hear it a totally different way yeah but how nice to not just have like a yes man or somebody just tells oh my gosh great. yeah it's it's awesome yeah, yeah that's so nice um a guy got his got your name tattooed on him <laughs> yeah what the heck and it was crazy it was also so casual too he's like oh i need to show you something <laughs> he pulls up his thigh and it's like my name like right across it was huge yeah um that was crazy I always, like, wonder why people get, like, names. Um, but, yeah, I've seen a lot of tattoos this tour. Really? Of, like, my album songs, uh, album name, my name, uh, like, my face sometimes. Like Your face? Like, tiny little, like, outlines of my face. Like, it's, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, how does that feel? That's it's wild. It's surreal. It's very cool. I, I mean, like, I think my fans are, like awesome and uh it is very like shocking every time i i see it right you've said in a past interview your celebrity crush was asap rocky uh -huh. is that still the case <laughs> yeah, and if I, not who i think asap is so hot <laughs> um and also i have a crush on him and rihanna together nice. i think <laughs> it's the hottest couple like alive um who else do i have a crush on right now i feel like i'll always constantly have a crush on uh Derek Shepard, Patrick Dempsey from Grey's Anatomy. I just recently, I recently, <laughs> recently saw like an edit of him the other day. And I'm like, God, I miss him. <laughs> yeah. You're a Grey's fan. I miss him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen the show in a sec. Yeah. yeah. I know. We all miss him. That's, we all miss him. Yeah. So good. I know. Um, okay. I was surprised to see that you didn't have Calgary on your tour list. And it's because a lot of people like doing hometown shows, but you're the opposite of that. Do you know what I think it is? Is because I never my last tour was last year, and we didn't start with Calgary on it. Okay. So now I'm, like, scared of it because I'm, like, I haven't done it for now, like, three years. And I, like, I'm now just, like, terrified to, like, see my friends. And also everyone, all my friends want to, they're, like, oh, you should play a show in Calgary. Um, and now I'm just, like, no. <laughs> so um, maybe one day we'll make right. our way over there. You, like, built it up too much for yourself. Yeah. And also just, I think, performing for people you know is... 10 times worse than performing for strangers. I can imagine that the dynamic with friends in Calgary changes now that you're in LA because when we first met, you were talking about living this double life where you're going to school still, but you're still going to LA. Yeah. So how is that? You've got to grow up really fast in this industry too, right? Yeah. It's, um, it's really interesting. I think my closest friends have stayed the closest. Um, I have like a very small circle, uh, back in Calgary who I like always hang out with like my like five girlfriends. Um, and then I think the rest, it has shifted a little bit. It's, like, always a little interesting coming back home. But I, whoever I, w I was close with in, like, grade 9, 10, I'm still best friends with now. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. Sweet. So the album's done, ready to go? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, lots of announcements and songs coming very soon. Okay. Yeah. We'll leave it at that. Yeah. Tate, my so buddy. So good to see you. So good to see you. Too. You're the best. <laughs> Thanks so much for coming by. <laughs> <laughs>